All right, welcome back to the channel. Within nine minutes, I'm gonna show you how to use buttons with programmatic auto layout, and I'm also gonna show you how to animate these, okay? So that's the main focus of this video, is animating these NS layout constraints. I'm gonna go ahead and open the app again, and I'm just gonna click this button. Super simple stuff, oh, super simple stuff, and you'll know how to animate auto layout constraints and use layout if needed by the end of this video. See you in just a second. All right, so what you're gonna wanna do is open up a new Xcode project. This is a plain project without that default comment, right? If I could, yeah, right there. And then what we're gonna do here is we're just going to basically put a button on the screen, okay? So go ahead and say let button is equal to UI button. And we'll say button dot translates auto resizing mask and constraints is set to false so that we can use programmatic auto layout. Let's now say view dot add sub view button. And then we will give it some properties above this. So we'll say button dot layer dot corner radius is equal to 12. Button dot background color is equal to, uh, let's say dot cyan. And then uh, I think that's all we should need. We need a title. So we'll say button dot set title and we'll just say animate. And then for control state, we'll say dot normal, okay? Next thing we're gonna do is we are just gonna say button dot height anchor dot constraint is equal to, and we'll say 60 dot is active is true. And then we'll copy that and paste it and say width anchor is equal to 100. Let's go ahead and say button dot center y anchor dot constraint is equal to constant. There is equal to, and we'll say view dot center y anchor. So this will constrain it in the middle of our screen on the y axis. And then we will copy that and you probably already guessed what we're gonna do here and we're gonna say center X anchor. This will give our button a width and a height, 60 and 100, 100 in width and a 60 height, and then it will center it on both of our axes, all right? So that's pretty self-explanatory. Now we're activating these constraints immediately, okay? Now the thing is, if we want to animate these constraints, we need to put them in a variable so that we can modify the variable when we click the button, okay? So that's our button. I'm just gonna set the color of our title to something like black, right? Set color, title color. And I'm just gonna say dot black for dot normal. Dot normal. All right, now we can animate these if we put them in variables, okay? So we need a function first. So let's say button dot add gesture, well, we'll say add target, target itself, action is pound selector or hashtag selector, whatever you, want, whatever you want to call that. And you can say self dot, or you can just say handle animation like that. And then for the control event, we're going to say touch up inside. Let's go ahead and write our function by saying objective C func handle animation to expose it to objective C. This is required for a selector and a gesture recognizer. And I'm just going to mark it file private. There we go. So we can say print and say trying to animate constraints, okay? Go ahead and compile your application. We should see a black title now, and if we click that button, it should print out trying to animate constraints, okay? All right, so we're good to go. Let's go ahead and click it, and you'll see we're getting that print statement, okay? So what we're gonna wanna do now is put our constraints into variables so that we can modify them and animate them, okay? So it's actually very simple, so just follow along and I will show you. I'm gonna get rid of this white space line. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna declare a couple variables up here. We'll say file private, I'm gonna say height anchor, and we're gonna say var height anchor is of type NS layout constraint. We'll unwrap it, or we will basically explicitly declare that so we know, okay, we're gonna set it, okay? Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna say width anchor, and those are the anchors we're gonna be modifying. Let's go ahead now and get rid of the dot is active on these and then store them in variables and then activate them in a second. So we'll say height anchor is equal to that. And then we'll take this and we'll say width anchor is equal to that. And then now we can just activate those right here. So we'll say height anchor dot width, sorry, height anchor dot is active is true. And width anchor dot is active is true. If you compile your application, uh, nothing's really gonna change because we all we did really was store it in a variable and then activate the variable. So nothing really changed at all, okay? So now we're in a good spot though to animate these constraints. So 
We're gonna do this with layout if needed and UI view spring animations. So I'm gonna get rid of the print and I'm just gonna say UI view dot animate and I'm gonna say spring and then choose that spring one so it will look like a spring, okay? With duration, I'm just gonna say one second. You can do however much you want. Delay, zero, spring with damping, 0.5 for that like 50% kind of spring animation. Initial spring velocity, one. And animation options, I'm just gonna choose something like curve, curve ease out. And then animations, I'm gonna hit return. And then in here is where we're gonna call layout if needed. So we'll say view.layout if needed. And it says lays out the sub views immediately if layout updates are pending, okay? So let's do that. Let's hit tab and get rid of the completion. Now let me explain this a bit, okay? So we're saying layout if needed, but you're like, okay, but what does that mean? Okay, first let's mark this self because we're inside of a completion handler. And basically this isn't gonna do anything because we don't need to lay out our sub views, right? It only lays it out if there are updates that are pending. So we can cause our application to do something. We can have it do something and have it lay out the sub views again if we update our height and width anchor constraints so that there is a change that needs to be re-laid out by our application. Okay, so we'll say height anchor dot constraint. Here's what we'll do. We'll say if I'll do this second, okay? So we'll say hide anchor dot constant is equal to, and let's make it bigger. So it's 60 right now. Let's say something like 400. And let's just recompile our application and see what that does, all right? And uh, yeah, so when we click this button now, come on, bam, animates. It looks really cool, right? Now let's animate the width as well. Super simple, all we have to do is say width anchor dot constant is equal to, let's say 200. Let's recompile our application and run it again, okay? All right, all right, all right. And bam, animates. What if you want the width anchor to go after the height anchor? Well, that's when we can use completions and kind of chain these animations, or we can just say perform with delay, right? So what I want you to do is I want you to copy all this, write a function right here, let's say file private func animate again, and we'll paste it in there. We'll get rid of the hide anchor in this one, and then we'll get rid of the width anchor in this one, okay? What we could do is we could actually cut this out, paste it below here, and then set a delay on this animation of let's say 1.5 seconds. Get rid of the animate a gun function and let's just re well the problem with this is that it's not it's gonna run immediately okay all right let's click it and you'll see after 1.5 seconds it animates okay so super cool stuff and i hope you learned something tell me what you think and i will continue creating videos all right leave a like and subscribe see you next time